Hey, what's up everybody? It's Charlie. I just got back from watching Beetlejuice Beetlejuice. Today is officially opening day. So spoiler warning just to give you a heads up in case. But for anybody who wants to know, stick around. So of course, Beetlejuice Beetlejuice continues 35 years later with Lydia having these like flashes of Beetlejuice in her mind. And she's a host of her own paranormal show called Ghost House. So with her ability to be able to speak to the dead, see the dead and all that kind of stuff, made her a household name. And that's kind of what kept her from being a mother to Astrid in a way. Because Astrid's character misses her father terribly. That in a tragic accident, of course, and wondered why her mom couldn't see him out of everybody in the afterlife. There is one mention of the Maitlands in the movie. And I swear with the opening credits scene, when you see the model of the thing, of the town, I swear you see the little figurines of Adam and Barbara. But they are mentioned at least once in the film. I feel like they wanted Jeffrey Jones to be in this movie so badly because he was a part of the first one. Because no joke throughout the whole movie, he is mentioned. His face is shown, but not the actor himself, because of certain allegations. But back to the synopsis of the film. So Jenna Ortega's character, Astrid, having resentment towards her mom, have to learn how to reconnect in the afterlife, so to speak. And so who does she have to call to get help from? Beetlejuice. And I was semi-right about the movie in itself because if you guys remember the cartoon from back in the 90s, it kind of delves into that world a little bit more of the Beetlejuice, you know, spirit realm, the afterlife or purgatory, whatever you want to call it. Because they do have something in the film called a soul train that takes you to different levels of the afterlife. Because when the Maitlands are mentioned, Barbara and Adam, they figured out a loophole and moved on. That's why they're not in the movie, so to speak. So that loophole, I believe, is the soul train that takes you to where you want to go. Because I'm beginning to think that Beetlejuice's world, where everybody else is, including one of the famous characters now, Bob, with the shrunken head, I basically think that's the um, purgatory world, City of the Dead, as you would call it. And it's funny because a lot of people think that Beetlejuice had more screen time and may look like it, but he really doesn't. It's funny how movies can make you think that that person is throughout the whole movie, when really they're not. You kind of had the notion with the first Beetlejuice as well. When really, when you put all of his time together condensed in the first film, it was like, what, maybe 10, 15 minutes worth? So if you add up all the time into this one, it's about the same. But all in all, I had a fun time with it. I still believe the first one is the best. I'll give it a four out of five, just because I feel like this is one we probably didn't necessarily need. But I'm sure way better than what we could have got back in the 90s with Beetlejuice 2, Beetlejuice Goes Hawaiian. Yeah, so at least we didn't get that one, you know. But if you guys happen to like this video, be sure to like and comment, and be sure to give a follow. You guys have a good day, stay safe, and stay tuned. Thank you.